So doing an example, we got two unit vectors A and B that make an angle of 60 degrees between each other. Determine the magnitude and direction of 3A minus 2B. Now this question is going to combine a lot of concepts, so do your best to follow along. So to start this example off, I drew vectors A and B and I made an angle of 60 degrees between them. Now, I want to discuss a few things about this diagram here. So first off, notice how in the question A and B were not given specific directions. So I just arbitrarily made A point in the east direction, but you could have made a point in the north direction, west, south, or anything in between. Just as long as number one, the vector B that you draw relative to it has an angle of 60 degrees between it. And when you draw this vector 3A minus 2B, which we will do in a little bit, it's properly to scale with whatever your diagram is. The next thing I want you to notice is that in the question, A and B are unit vectors. So the magnitude of A is equal to 1 and the magnitude of B is also equal to 1. Now moving on to the tricky part, let's draw the diagram knowing that this is A and B now. Let's draw the vector, the resultant vector for 3A minus 2B. Now 3a minus 2b, we can also rewrite as 3a plus negative 2b. So we're starting off with a vector 3a. I drew it over here. So this vector 3a should be triple the length of this vector. And since it's a positive scalar, it's going in the same direction. Now to add this vector negative 2b to this vector 3a, I'm going to draw a little compass on the tip of this vector uh, 3a, so this would be east, north, south. Now before we get into drawing negative 2b, let's draw the, vec the original vector b first. So notice how b, since a goes in a east direction, we made it go in an east direction, b would just be 60 degrees north of that. So b would be somewhere here. So this would be our, red, our original vector b, and this is 60 degrees. Now when we add negative 2b, the negative means that we go in the opposite direction of our original vector b. So it's going to go this way, the opposite way of this vector. And then the 2 means that the magnitude of b is doubled. So it's going to look something like this. So this vector here is negative 2b. It went in the opposite direction of our original vector b and the magnitude or the length of the vector should be doubled because of this uh, 2. So hopefully it's somewhat to scale on the video. The next thing I want you to notice is that because this angle here is 60 degrees, this opposite angle is also 60 degrees. Now if we switched up the scenario and instead of having 3a minus 2b, we had 3a plus 2b, then b would go in the, in the original direction, in the same original direction, and its magnitude would be doubled. So then the angle between 3a and positive 2b would be 120, basically 180 minus the 60. However, since we are going in the negative, in the opposite direction, the angle between 3a and negative 2b is 60 degrees. So now the resultant of these, what do you do with the resultant? Well, you take the tail of the first vector and attach it. Sorry, let's try to make this a little better. So you attach it to the head of the last vector. So this vector here ends up being our resultant. So this vector here ends up being 3a minus 2b. So 
this question is asking us what's the magnitude of this vector and what's the direction of it. And before we get into doing all that, it's going to require a lot of math. I want to talk about what the magnitude of 3a and negative 2b will be. So the magnitude of our original vector a is 1, so the magnitude of 3a would just be 3. It would just be equal to 3 because a is a unit vector. Similarly here, the magnitude of this vector, negative 2b, because the original vector b was, uh, was a unit vector, had a magnitude of 1, negative 2b would have a magnitude of 2. Remember that magnitude always has to be positive. So the length of this vector here is 3, the length of this vector here is 2, and the angle between them is 60 degrees. So now let's get into determining what the magnitude of this vector, 3a minus 2b, is going to be. And notice that we have a non-right angle triangle here that has two sides and the angle in between them. And we have to find the length of the side that's opposite to that given angle. So to determine this length, we would have to use cosine law. So as a review, I wrote out what the general cosine law is. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And then if we relate this cosine law to our specific triangle, we would have the magnitude of 3a uh, minus 2b, this, uh, this vector squared, is equal to the magnitude of our vector 3a squared plus the magnitude of our negative 2b vector squared minus 2 times the magnitude of 3a times the magnitude of negative 2b times uh, cos of this inner angle 60 degrees. So then moving on and then doing the math, the magnitude of 3a is just 3. The magnitude of negative 2b is just 2. Minus 2 times the magnitude of 3a is just 3. The magnitude of negative 2b is just 2 times cos 60. So if you plug all this in your calculator, you would get the magnitude of 3a minus 2b squared is equal to 7. Meaning the magnitude of 3a minus 2b is equal to the square root of 7. Or if you want to write it in decimal form, the square root of 7 would be 2.645. So that is our magnitude of this vector. We just use cosine law to solve for it. Now we need to find what the direction of, uh, of this vector, of this result in 3a minus 2b is. And as I mentioned before, notice how we're not given any di specific directions to work with. So when we find the direction of this resultant, we're going to have to relate it to the direction of A. So it will be a certain degree relative to the direction of our vector A. So to solve for this uh, angle theta here, we can use the sine law because now we know what the magnitude of this resultant vector is, we know that it's root 7. So we can use the sine law. So sine of 60 degrees over the magnitude of the opposite side, root 7, is equal to sine of theta over its opposite side, which is this vector negative 2b that has a magnitude of 2. So when we cross multiply, when we isolate for theta, we would get theta is equal to the inverse of sine of 2 times sine 60 over root 7. And then when we plug this into our calculator, we would get a final uh, degree of 40.9 degrees. So this angle here is 40.9 degrees. 
Now I just want to make an additional point on the example that we were doing. Now you'll notice how everything is erased because I forgot to actually make this point when I was doing the example, so bear with me a little bit. But I want to talk about this angle 40.9 degrees that we solved. Now usually when we talk about a direction, we talk about it specifically in terms of northwest, northwest, south, or east. However, in this case, in the original question, we weren't given directions. So when we talk about the direction of this resultant, this 3a minus 2b, we say that it is going in a direction of 40.9 degrees relative or with respect to the vector 3a or the vector a. They're, both uh, vectors are going in the same direction. So. As a recap, the magnitude of the resultant we got by doing cosine law with, uh, with this side of uh, this vector 3a, the angle 60 degrees, and this vector negative 2b. And then we solve for this theta for the direction using sine law. So the final magnitude is root 7 of this resultant vector and the direction of it is 40.9 degrees relative or with respect to vector A.